should help you a little bit later after this, but I can't right now. What's up, everybody? Hey, 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 hey. Welcome, welcome to another exciting week in Mr. Hubney's Google Classroom. So, um, hair's looking a little crazy. Just knows that. Hopefully, you don't mind my crazy hair, guys. Um, so, as promised, today, 3 p.m., doing our check-in, seeing how everyone's doing. Um, new week has started, and there's kind of some important information. Uh, we're going to get some more details on the future of our Google Classroom and online learning because, as you all are aware, and I made this announcement during last week during our April vacation check-in that I did, so thank, thank you, those of you who were there to make it for that check-in, um, office hours, whatever you want to call it. But as you know, the announcement has been made by our governor to keep the schools closed for the remainder of the year, which means we are continuing going forward with our online learning in the Google Classroom. So we anticipate some changes of how this will be done. I've been doing check-ins with you guys every day at 3 p.m., but that might change and get expanded. Uh, so this week, we're going to hear from the school about what they want us to do. So please check back. Um, throughout the week as I post announcements and things like that to keep informed about what next week is going to look like because it's going to be probably a little maybe different schedule. I'm not even sure myself, but I'll keep you I'll keep you um, aware of what the developments are. And on that note, this week I posted a very important assignment. It's called assignment number five, Google Classroom Survey. I need you to complete that survey. It's going to give information to myself and the school about what is working for Google Classroom, what is not working, what are the best practices, uh, what do you like, what don't you like, what do you want. So that's assignment number five. It's so important. We made it worth as the quiz grade for the week, and I bumped up the points all the way to 100 points. So it's an easy 100 points for you guys to complete a survey. It's just questions about Google Classroom and how is it going for you. So please complete that survey, uh, very important. I actually, it's assignment number five and I actually put a link up as well in the stream so you can find it easy, but you should have no problems finding that assignment five, Google Classroom survey, okay? So that's first order of business. Second order of business, guys, is let's talk about our new topic for this week. Um, let me hold on a second. Let me kill this thing in the background. Kill some background noise here. Yeah, that's better. Down in the basement, we've got the dehumidifier going. Got to kill the noise there. So we are starting um, talking about, we've been talking about heat and heating things up and temperature and all that good stuff before the April break. Uh, so we're continuing learning about what is heat and how is heat transferred and and how do we measure temperature and what does temperature really mean we're going to continue learning about heat so for this week's topic we're going to talk about something called specific heat so i figured i'll give you a little intro here for this week uh, especially as some people started the assignments already and they had some questions on it uh, particularly assignment four, because assignment number four involves an equation. So we know equations can be a little scary. So let, let's talk about it here. So if we go over and um, start talking about what is the specific heat business, okay? So uh, let, let, let's start with the basic definition, and we'll get a marker that actually works, or, or we'll try to. That one seems like it's seen better days. So I put some notes in this week. So this is all in the notes. It's all in the notes. You'll see it there. But I figure I'll go over it with you guys as well. And also the Ed Puzzle videos, the YouTube videos I posted, go over this stuff. But I figure I'll talk you guys through it since I did have some questions. And, um, and I was going back and forth with uh, Stephen earlier today. He had some questions, especially on assignment four. So I was like, hey, what's up, Brandon? Welcome, welcome. How have you been, sir? How have you been? Okay. Specific heat. So 
what's that mean? What's that all mean? Well, the first thing I want you to notice is, well, it has the word heat. Okay, we talked about heat. And when you think of heat, right, you, you guys are aware of heat as you're heating something up, right? You're heating something up. So what's happening? So when you're – and this was in the videos for last week. Mr. Anderson talked about this, I think, before the break, before the break. But And you'll see it in this week's video as well. But when you're heating something up, uh, we're basically giving energy to that object, okay? So think of heat as – energy energy being transferred can you see that let me adjust that sorry my you know my handwriting is not the best and brandon i'm glad you're doing well brandon's here checking in with us so that's good my man so when we were talking about heat energy being transferred now specific heat it's going to be the topic for this week we're, we're getting into that specific when I talk about something specific, if I say I want a specific T-shirt, right, that means I'm very particular about the T-shirt I want. I want a specific T-shirt that has an emoji smiley face or something like that. That means you can't just buy me any T-shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, cool. Hey. So Brandon was telling me he's on a Google Meet right now. So uh, not to interrupt, but uh, tell Miss Kane I said hello, by the way. I hope all's well with her. But if I tell you I want a specific T-shirt, um, that means you can't get me any certain T-shirt. I want a specific T-shirt. It has to be a certain one. If I'm like, I want the T-shirt that has the smiley emoji face on it, go buy me that T-shirt. And you get me a purple t-shirt with pink stripes going down it. No emoji face. I would be upset. You did not get me the specific t-shirt I wanted. So specific means it's very, very particular. It's, it's, it's gotta be that certain thing. It's, it's very specific. It has to be that thing and no other thing. So when we talk about specific heat, we're basically talking about that. The fact that things heat up differently, okay? You've experienced this in real life. If I were to heat up some water and I'm trying to heat up some oil, which you're going to do in, a, I believe, assignment two, I think, this week on the computer lab, you're going to notice they heat up differently. That is, let's say I put some water in a pot in some oil in a different pot, but I give them the same amount of heat. I just turn the heat up all the way, both burners, and the water's on one burner and the oil's on the other burner. Of course, they're in the pot. And uh, you, you see what happens. You'll notice some differences in how they heat up. So scientists notice these things too. And they gave a term that describes the differences in how things heat up, how quickly they change their temperature, whether getting hotter or colder, okay? It works both ways for specific heat. If it takes a lot of heat to warm up this water, and it takes a long time to boil this water, if you ever try to boil water, you know, it takes some time. It doesn't instantly boil. You don't put the water on the pot and it just starts boiling as soon as you turn the heat on. You know you got to wait for your water to boil so you can make your tea or coffee. Same thing. If you ever took your hot water and left it out and you go back to it every few minutes, you know it takes some time for it to cool down. So this specific heat can go both ways in terms of getting – we draw like a thermometer, right? So in terms of getting hotter – you like my, my thermometer here? So in terms of temperature going up or temperature going down, that is going to be different for each material we heat up, whether it's oil, whether it's water, whether it's some metal. You guys probably know, like, let me find it. something metal. You guys know from experience, metal heats up quick, right? You have something metal in the sun. 
you touch it, it's hot. Or or you heat up something metal, you touch it, it's hot. But guess what? It also – so it heats up fast, but guess what? If you leave that metal alone for a minute, it's going to cool down pretty quickly too. So it goes both ways. So scientists noted noticed different materials heat up differently. So they gave the word specific because, remember, specific means like certain – so if I want a specific T-shirt, you can't buy me any T-shirt. You got to buy me the one I want. So every material has a specific heat. It heats up faster or slower than different materials, okay? And scientists have figured out and calculated these values for different materials. And they now know how much energy it takes to heat up water or oil or a block of metal like aluminum. They know how much energy it takes. So they've given it a specific heat value. Okay. So how much energy? Let's define this. So this is in our notes and in the video this week. But let's define it. So specific heat, the amount of energy okay how much energy we need no energy we measure in joules it's a unit named after a scientist maybe we could change that to the hubini but for now it's measuring in joules so the amount of energy to raise or let's say change because you know what to change the temperature you, you could be trying to heat something up and it takes a certain amount of energy or you could be trying to cool something down. Maybe I want to freeze this water. Um, so instead of giving it energy, instead of giving it heat, transferring energy, thermal energy, maybe I want to cool it down. So I want to take energy away, right? Cooling process is when we take energy away. So I put it in a freezer and the energy in the water as heat will transfer out into the cold air of the freezer, hot to cold energy, heat, heat always transfers from higher energy, hotter temperatures to lower energy, colder temperatures. So it could be heating, but it could be cooling. So we'll say the amount of energy to change because we don't, it could be getting hotter or colder. So we'll just say to change. Now here's the thing. Since scientists wanted a specific value for specific, there's that word again. So they wanted the exact value, how much energy it takes. This is important because, um, you know, you could use this value to determine uh, what type of materials you want to use when you're building something or engineering and designing something. You could figure out how much heat will be generated and if your material will change temperature due to that heat generated and and so they they made it a specific quantity okay I'm gonna keep using that word specific so the amount of energy to change we'll put one so gram or kilogram so if I've seen this defined two ways one gram or one kilogram we'll use one kilogram so a kilogram kilogram is just a thousand grams so we'll use the kilogram definition let's say we're trying to heat up a kilogram of water all right let's pretend this is one kilo kilogram of water 1000 grams of water or of oil or whatever so to change one kilogram by one degree celsius so that's kind of easy to remember we just want to change the temperature by one degree now you may be want you may want to heat it up 100 degrees or 20 degrees or cool it down 30 degrees. But the point is if we know how much energy it takes to change it by 1 degree, you could always just multiply that by however many more degrees you want. If you want it the temperature to change 5 degrees, you could multiply it by 5 and you'll know. And here's the other thing, 1 kilogram. Maybe you don't have a kilogram of water. Maybe you have less or maybe you have more. Again, you can, you could just always multiply or divide by the amount 
But if we know how much energy to change one kilogram by one degree Celsius, we can figure out how much energy for however temperature we want or however amount of mass, the grams or kilograms we want, simply by multiplying by those values. And I'll show you that. That's part of your work this week. We have an equation that uses this. So if we know how much we have, the grams, kilograms, if we know how much we're changing the temperature, and we know the specific heat of the material, which we can look it up in a table because scientists have done the calculations and figured it out. Um, because you can go backwards. You can change the formula and find the specific heat of the material. But for now, we're just going to talk about how to find the amount of energy if you know the specific heat. So we can, we can use these numbers. So specific heat, the amount of energy in joules, right, because that's what we measure energy in the physics, to change one kilogram by one degree Celsius. So let's use our example of water and oil. All right, let's say the specific heat of water. Use the color. Uh, let's see. Okay. What if the specific heat for water let's say it was 4.19 okay so this is a value 4.19 joules kilograms degree celsius okay so let's say that's the value let's look up the value for like oil now let's compare oil um so Let's get the value for oil. I think it's like 1.6. Uh, looking this up real quick, guys. Okay. All right. So let's make this grams because if it was kilograms, if I put kg kilograms, it would be 4,000 something. So we'll keep the numbers a little bit lower. Um, yeah, no, we can keep it kilograms. So we'll keep it kilograms. We'll just move the decimal because it would take about 4.19 joules for a gram, but we'll keep it kilograms. So multiply that by 1,000 because there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram, right? So it'll take 4,900. Okay, so specific heat of water, like 4,900 joules. We'll, we'll say we have a kilogram of water. If it was grams, you know, divide by 1,000, it would be 4.19. But again, so we look this up. We look this up. Now, what about oil? Now, it depends on the type of oil. So olive oil, I don't know. I'm just going to say I was trying to look it up, but I don't want to take too much time here. So I think it is like a little under two, I think, or just about two. Let me see if I can find it because I wasn't – there's so much different types of oil. Yeah, it's between 1.6, 2.5. Let's just use like 1.6 just for fun. So let's say we have oil, right? So uh, dot, dot, dot. let's write it over here. Hopefully you can see this. So yeah, there you go. Specific heat, oil. All right. So oil and one thousand, let's say six hundred joules, kilograms, degrees Celsius. Now you may have noticed that unit is quite a doozy for specific heat, right? It's got like three letters usually. We're used to one letter for a unit, like like kilograms, kilo, or it's two letters, but basically one thing. Kilograms is for the mass. Celsius is for the temperature. It's just like one letter. Here's like three letters. Why is that? Well, think of our definition of specific heat, okay? The amount of energy, so joules, There's that's why it has the J for joules, um, 
to change one kilogram, okay, there's our kilogram, so it's one kilogram, by one degree Celsius. There's a degree Celsius. So that's why you see all those units in there because that is what specific heat is. It's energy per mass per temperature, okay? So how much energy, joules, to change a kilogram, the mass, by a one degree Celsius temperature. So what this means is it takes, if we have one kilogram of water, let's pretend this is a kilogram of water, and I want to heat it up, let's say this is at 20, let's keep the number, like 25 Celsius, okay, about room temperature. And I want to heat it up to 26 Celsius. Well, how much energy do I need? Assuming this is one kilogram, that's one kilogram of water. I want to raise the temperature one degree, so from 25 to 26. How much energy does it take? Boom, 4,190 joules, because that's its specific heat. That's the defin by definition, that's how much energy it takes to change one kilogram, one degree. That's it. What about oil? Let's pretend this is one kilogram of oil. And I want to raise the oil. The oil is the same temperature as the water right now. Why? They've been sitting in the room. They have reached thermal equilibrium. If you remember that from last week or the week before, before break, they are at the same temperature as each other because heat has been transferred to them and the heat from the room gave energy to the water and oil until they all became the same temperature and they'll stay that way. Thermal equilibrium. So the oil is also 25 degrees, but I want to raise it to 26. So if I heat it up, how much energy would I need? Assuming it's one kilogram, boom, 1,600. That's its specific heat. That's the definition. How much energy do I need? So what is easier to heat up? That's the question. This is kind of getting to your work this week. Now that we've thought about this a little bit, what would need more energy to heat up? If we're comparing water versus oil, let's pretend we have the same amount. Let's pretend they're at the same temperature. So we have a kilogram water, a kilogram oil. They're both at 25 Celsius. We put them both on the same heater, getting the same heat, which would heat up faster, right? So if we look at this specific heat over here, we know water takes 4,190 joules to raise a kilogram. Oil takes 1,600 joules to heat a kilogram up a Celsius, one degree. So what takes more energy? Water's like four times amount, right? 1,600 versus 4,000. It's a little less than four times, but you know, it's about four times or so. Um, okay, maybe more like three times, but you get the picture here. It takes a lot more energy to heat up water, 4,000 versus 1,000, right? It takes more energy. So if I give them the same amount of heat, energy, they're on the same heater, same amount, same starting temperature, we would expect the oil to heat up quicker. And if you've ever done cooking with oil, um, you know, you'll, you'll see it heat up faster than it would if you had, a, had water you're heating up. So the oil will change its temperature faster. It will heat up faster, also cool down faster, okay? This is why things like metal, if you take um, metals and heat them up, they heat up very quickly. And then they also, when you remove the heat and leave the metal out for a little bit, they give off the heat and they cool down very quickly. So do you think they have a high specific heat or a low specific heat for metals? Okay. So the fact they heat up quick and cool down quick doesn't take a lot of energy to change the temperature of a metal. So they have lower specific heats. 
the amount of energy you change one kilogram by one degree Celsius, it's very low for metals. It doesn't take a lot of energy. They have a low specific heat. It's usually in the hundreds. These are in thousands. Metals could be in the hundreds of joules, only hundreds of joules versus thousands of joules of energy. So the lower the specific heat, the easier to change the temperature. It takes less energy. So it will heat up quick, cool down quick. The higher the specific heat, like water, water is known as a substance with a high specific heat. And you'll see many natural phenomena like this. Let's speak about water here. Excuse me. Ah, might as well have a sip of it while I'm here. So you'll see some interest in natural phenomena due to water's very high specific heat. The fact that it has a high specific heat means it takes a lot of energy to heat up or cool it down. Um, so if you're like, let's say there's a swimming pool and they just filled the swimming pool with water. Okay. It's a hot, sunny day, but they literally just opened the pool, just filled it with water. If you jump in that pool, the water is usually pretty cold, right? They don't typically fill a swimming pool with hot water unless they have a heater. Um, let's say there's no heater. They're just pouring. They're, well, they just have a hose from a faucet filling up a pool, cold water, okay? Sun's shining. It's a hot day, 90 degree Fahrenheit, whatever outside. The pool's going to be cold when you first jump in. You usually have to wait hours or even days of hot weather before that swimming pool will heat up, okay? Because water has a high specific heat. Same thing, let's say the temperature cools. So the swimming pool's open during the day, it's a hot day. Let's say it's been hot for a few days. The swimming pool eventually is getting all that heat energy from the air and the sun. And so the water's warm. Now. Sun goes away, nighttime, nighttime, okay? You decide to take a swim at night. You step outside, the sun's gone, the temperature dropped like 20 degrees. It's not like 80 anymore. It's only like 60 outside. And you're cold. You're like, oh man, I don't know. But you're crazy, so you jump in the water anyways. You notice the water in the swimming pool is warmer than the air. Why is that? The high specific heat of water means it changes temperature very, very slow, it's like slower than other materials, okay? Um, so the water temperature would be probably warmer than the air temperature, and you might have noticed that. So those are some common things you may have noticed. God give a shout out to Elizabeth for joining us. How are you doing? Good to hear from you. I hope all's well with you. Um, so those of you just tuning in, guys, what I'm doing is uh, I'm talking a bit about this week's work. So I'm going over what is specific heat. So if you missed some of that, I'm going to post the video on the Google, Google Classroom later today. So you can always rewatch it. This will help you with your work. And also earlier, I made an announcement about a survey I put up. This is an important assignment. It's going to count as your quiz grade. So please do the survey. It's about um, Google Classroom. We're trying to collect some data on how students are using it, what's going good, what's not, et cetera, et cetera. So Elizabeth says she's doing great. That's awesome. Yeah, I am doing well. I am doing well. Uh, we had Brandon earlier today. Um, Brandon and Elizabeth were in the same class when we were in, were, were in school. So Brandon was here earlier. He's checking in with another teacher, but I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you're doing well. So specific heat, back to this guys, because I want to post this video for you guys to watch later. So uh, just had to give a shout out to Elizabeth. And But um, so we know different materials have different specific heats and that tells us how easy it is to change their temperature. Water has a very high specific heat. So it takes a lot of energy to change its temperature. Oil has a lower specific heat. So it's easier to change the temperature of oil. So it heat up faster than water. It only takes a thousand joules of energy versus water's 4,000. 
Now, let's say you want to know the specific amount of energy you need, okay? Or it's going to require to heat something up or how much energy something lost um, if it was given off heat. We can figure that out. If we know the specific heat value, which we do, we can look it up. We know how much we have, how much grams or kilograms, and we know the um, temperatures. What's the temperature starting at versus what it's going to become? We can figure this out. So I want to talk about this because I got some questions on this. People are already doing the assignments, and they're like, had questions on this. And I don't blame you. Um, it is in your notes, and there is a video about it. But, you know, it is kind of tricky. But let's go over it. Let's do, let's do a problem here. What if uh, let's use water? Let's use water. All right, so we know the specific heat of water because I looked it up. It is 4,190 joules per kilogram Celsius. So that means if I have one kilogram of water and I want to change it by one degree, I want to heat it up one degree Celsius, it would take 4,190 joules of energy. All right, well, what if I don't have one kilogram of water? Let's pretend this is... Um, I don't know. Let's pretend this is mm, two kilograms of water. Two. Well, you probably could figure out if I'm just raising the temperature by one, I could just twice as much energy. There's two twice as much. Okay. But what happens if I have like 12 kilograms of water? Well, now maybe you can't just multiply in your head by that 12. Or how about this? What if instead of just changing it one degree, what if I want it? What if it changed by like something weird, like 19 degrees? It's not as easy because now, now, okay, it changed not by one, by a 19. And I don't just have one kilogram. I have like, I don't know, like 12 or whatever. Well, we have a formula that does it, that, that shows us how to do it. It is just multiplying, like I was talking about. So let me show let me show you the formula. Um, so interestingly enough, Q stands for the heat. Okay, so if I'm trying to find out how much energy in joules, J for joules, heat, we use the symbol Q. I'm not even sure why, but that there you go. Mass. That's your kilograms. C, what is that C? Now that's not the C for Celsius. That's not big C, this is a lowercase c, and in the formula, this means the specific heat. All right, mass, specific heat. So we multiply those together, right? Because specific heat is how much energy it takes to change one kilogram. So if I have more than one kilogram, I would just multiply by however many I got. But what about the temperature? What if I'm not changing by one degree? What if I'm changing by more? So we have something else called delta T that we multiply by. Delta T is simply, delta is simply change, and T is temperature. This is our degree Celsius. So if I know how much the temperature changes, I can figure it out. Now, how do we find the change in temperature? Let me write this down because this is kind of interesting here. So what you do to find a change in temperature, okay, what this means is I'm going to take whatever my final temperature is, okay, whatever it ends at, and I'm going to take away whatever it starts at. I'm going to subtract, okay, because if I want to find the change of anything, I subtract it. So if I want to find how much my bank account changed, let's say I had $100 in my bank account, but then I bought groceries, and groceries cost, uh, let's say, $60, and I want to see how much did my bank account change. I had 100 and I spent 60 Well, I take the final amount, so I'm left with 60. 
I mean, I spent 60. I'm sorry. Wait, am I doing this right in my head? So I what? Let me make sure I'm doing that. I don't want to confuse you. So my bank account. I have a hundred dollars in my bank account. I spent sixty. Yeah, yeah. So I want to find the change. So, um, so you subtract, right? How much did my bank account changed? So I take, you know, I had a hundred. I take away sixty. I get forty. Um, so to find the change in temperature, I take my final temperature, subtract from the start. So let's say. Today, the temperature is, let's use Fahrenheit because you guys are used to Fahrenheit, but we're going to go back to Celsius. Uh, let's just use outside. So let's say in the morning, it was 40 degrees, okay, Fahrenheit. And now the temperature went up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So what was the change? So I would do uh, 60 degrees minus 40. So it changed by 20. Okay. So. Let's say we have water. We know the specific heat. Now, let's say we're given, so let's let's finish this. Let's say we're given, say we're given a certain amount of water. Let's say we have, I don't know, let's say we have, instead of one kilogram, let's say we have mm, four kilograms of water, okay? So the mass is four kilograms. All right. Now, let's say my water starts at, we'll put temperature start in TS. Um, let's say it's starting at room temperature. Let's say it's 25 Celsius, which is a little warm, but we'll do that. And let's say I mm, take my water and I heat it up to boil it. What does water boil at? Anyone knows? In Celsius, it's kind of easy to remember, water boils at 100 Celsius. So TF, that's going to be the final temperature. Okay? Now, there's something else I need to know about water. There's something else I do know, and that's its specific heat. Remember, the letter small c for specific heat. Let me, hopefully you can see this down here. Sorry if that's in your way. So that's 4,190 joules per each kilogram to raise it a degree Celsius. Uh, sorry, that's a big unit. I need to make some space. So that's my C, my lowercase c, which is my specific heat. Not to be confused with the unit big C for Celsius. So what if I want to find how much heat that's going to take to go from 25 Celsius to boil it to 100 Celsius? Um, so my unknown, so I'm trying to find the amount of heat I'm going to need, which we talked about in this formula is Q. So the equation, and you can see it up here. MC delta T. And remember, this delta T means change in temperature. So I'm going to actually subtract the final from start and temperature. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and substitute in the numbers. Okay, so M is my mass. That's 4 kilograms. Specific heat is 4,190. I'm not gonna write the units because I'm running out of space here, but the units. Um, and change in temperature. Now, here's what we need to do. Delta T, change in temperature. How do I find that? Subtract the temperature. See, I got two temperatures here. I can't just pick one or the other. I can't use both. I gotta see the change. So. I'm going to take the final temperature, which is 100, because I'm raising it up to boil in 100. So I'll take the final temperature minus the start in temperature. It starts at 25. All right. Um, and I didn't write units because I'm running out of space here, but you should always write units. But this is going to, it's okay. So 
what I end up with, I'm just going to do the subtraction part here. I'm just going to keep everything the same. So I got my four kilograms for my mass, my 4,190 specific heat. And 100 minus 25 is what? 75, right? Okay. So when I solve this, my last step, okay, I'm coming off the screen here. I need so much room, but this is our guess formula, right? Given unknown equation, substitute solve. So how do I solve this? As I mentioned earlier, it's multiplication. We multiply the three things together. So I would multiply the mass specific heat and how much the temperature changed. So four times 4,190 times 75. Okay, do I have a calculator here? Let me see if I got a calculator available here because I know some of my some of my um, students like to do things out on paper, like Marco. Marco will always be doing this workout. Uh, but trust me, I don't want to do this one out on paper longhand. Uh, I'll just look up a calculator here because I don't know where the calculator is right now. So we'll do four times. 4,190 times 75, and we get, okay, it's quite a big number here, but it's going to be 2, 7, wait, oops, sorry guys, 1, Two, five, seven, zero, zero, zero. And I'll put J for joules. That's our unit. Okay, so 1,257,000 joules. You're like, Dag, that's a lot of energy. And it is because water has a very high specific heat. So it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature in water. So just to change one kilogram by one degree took over 4,000 joules of energy. We're trying to change four kilograms. So that's already four times that amount. So that would already bring you to like 16,000. But we're trying to change four times the amount by 75 degrees. So 75 times. Um, so, yes, it is a lot. It is a lot of energy to heat up water. Now, imagine if I did this with oil. It would be a lower number, um, about a one-third or one-fourth of it, because the specific heat is about a third of that. So it would be less because it has a lower specific heat. Of course, that's assuming it's the same amount and I'm raising it to the same temperature. So this is why we need this equation because I'm not always heating one kilogram up one degree, okay? I might have different amounts, different mass. I might be changing the temperature by different amounts. So we have this handy dandy formula here, okay? All right this handy dandy formula that shows us how to find the temperature. Now, if, I mean, not the temperature, I'm sorry, the amount of energy, the amount of heat. Now, if I know how much heat was transferred, how much energy was used, and I know the mass, and I know what the temperature changed by, I can rearrange this to find the specific heat of the material, which is what a lot of, um, scientists will do they're trying to figure out that specific heat of material um but we're not going to go over that for now we're just going to do the basic application which is just using the formula straightforward the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature and just know as you get better at these you can change the formula to find the final temperature. Maybe you know the mass, maybe you know how much energy, the Q, the heat you used, and you know the specific heat of the material. 
but you want to know what's going to be the final temperature when all is said and done. You could rearrange it for that. But again, we're just going to stick with the basic application, guys, because uh, this video has gone on long enough. And I just want to give you the basics to help you with this week's work, give you introduction. So I'm going to post this up on the web on our Google Classroom for your reference. So you could kind of go back and look at it if you have any questions on the assignment. And um, this week, we will be going through the assignments using Google Meet. So I'm going to post on the classroom with this video a schedule. Each day, I'll be going over a different assignment. So join me 3 p.m., our usual time. We're going to do Google Meet. So it's going to be through the Google Classroom. So we'll have some video, video, video conferencing. And uh, you'll be able to uh, join in and get any help you want. And then when the school gives us the actual schedule, I will, um, I will modify according to the schedule they want us to have. Um, but for tomorrow, we'll meet again at 3 p.m. All right, guys. So thank those of you who joined in today. And uh, yeah, any questions, please reach out to me in the classroom. And it's been an honor.